Good morning and welcome to worship with Epiphany Lutheran Church in Richmond, Virginia for July the 5th, 2020. We give God thanks for the spirit which has gathered us here this morning. My name is Joseph Bolick and I am one of the pastors for our congregation. Pastor Philip Martin is on vacation this week, but he will be joining us during our children's sermon. Everything that you need to worship this morning will be displayed on the screen for you. But if you'd like to also download a bulletin, you can do that at epiphanyelca.org. We're looking so forward to worshiping together in person on July 19 and thereafter. Um, that's the Sunday which will begin in-person, on-site worship here at 1400 Horsepin Road. If you would like to be a part of the 50 people who will begin gathering at two services at 9 and 10.30 on that day, um, we'll be sending out a sign-up genius. You can sign up. You can join us um, beginning on, on July 19. These um, online worship services will continue even after that date. Things will be different, of course, this summer, um, but we're very happy that we will be offering a vacation Bible school for you this summer. Um, there will be a three-day virtual VBS called Volt that you and your family will be able to download. There will be um, videos that you can use and resources. And you can do that any time throughout the summer. Um, but also um, on the, the dates of uh, July the 13th through 17th, we'll be doing some interactive things with you. So we invite you to uh, go ahead and visit our, our website. Again, that's epiphanyelca.org. And under the Learn tab, you can scroll down find VBS 2020, and there's lots of resources for you there. Today's mystery hymn word is a Hebrew word that means peace and balance um, and uh, tranquility, and it's used as an idiom um, to say both hello and goodbye. So as we worship this morning, if you think you found our mystery hymn word, feel free to type that in in the comments below. We begin worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we do, do not, not trust your abundance and that we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We turn away from our neighbors and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven, so let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
So with you. A reading from Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations, his dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. 
Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Our second lesson comes from St. Paul's letter to the early church in Rome, chapter 7. St. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. <laughs> Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning and welcome to the children that are watching this morning. I invite you at this time to uh, come forward to the television screen or maybe the iPad or tablet for a special children's sermon. And as you get closer, uh, we will sing together our children's sermon song. <clears throat> holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, Lord. So some of you who've come to church before may remember uh, seeing the pastors wear a white robe. It's uh, called an alb. It's like a white robe. And over that robe, we're usually wearing a piece of cloth, a skinny piece of cloth kind of goes around our necks like this. And they're different colors. They change throughout the whole year. Um, this is one that a woman in our congregation named Mary Catherine Brown made just for me and one for Pastor Joseph. It, they usually have special symbols on them and we wear these when we're leading worship. These are called stoles or one of them is a stole. And um, I brought several stoles to show you this morning. You've probably seen us wear these and wonder why is a pastor wearing that thing around his neck? And this is one that I got at my first congregation in Pittsburgh. They gave this to me as a present one time. Um, you can tell that this one would be a stole that I'd wear at Christmas time. It's got uh, the star, uh, the star of Bethlehem. It's got, um, I think that's supposed to be Jesus there, or maybe a shepherd because there's sheep there and the three kings, the three crowns. So this is a stole that I'd wear when I lead worship at Christmas or um, on Epiphany. Um, I've got one more to show you. This is a special one. Uh, somebody in this congregation, uh, her, pastor, her father was a pastor. And uh, he died several years ago, but she gave this to me. He used to wear this. And um, anyway, this is, a, this is a nice one too, a nice stole. It's got different symbols on it. <clears throat> um, a stole, pastors wear stoles because they're supposed to remind us of a yoke. Um, yoke is a special tool that farmers use to hook their cattle together when they are working because a lot of times cows want to go in different directions, uh, but a farmer would need them to go together. I brought a picture. These, this is a picture of some cows that are together on a yoke. And so this yoke here kind of keeps them going in the same direction so that when the farmer is plowing, uh, the, the, the cows or the cattle, or sometimes it's horses, uh, will, will stay together and will walk together. And they're able to share the load that they are carrying. It makes it easier when they go together. Um, and a stole is supposed to remind me as a pastor and also to remind you that Jesus tells us that he has a yoke and that his yoke is easy, his burden is light. And one time he says, put my yoke upon you and learn from me. Jesus tells uh, his disciples and some other people, he says, put my yoke upon you and learn from me. And so when I wear this stole, I, I think it's good and it's helpful for me to go in the same direction as Jesus. And sometimes I want to go my own way, but Jesus is with me, and he is going to help me walk together with him. And it's not just pastors who are yoked with Jesus. It's all of us. Jesus wants all of us to walk together with him. And he comes and finds us, and he asks us to come alongside of him, and we walk together with him, and we find that when Jesus is walking with us, or we're walking alongside Jesus, that life 
becomes easier. We understand more about God's love for us. We understand that God comes to be with us in times of sorrow, in times of trouble, and that Jesus is there to walk alongside of us so that we don't go our own way too much, when that would be, that would, that would be hard. That's when things would get hard for us. But that Jesus is always there to lead us and to walk next to us, just like when cows are together in a yoke. So when you hear that Jesus says his yoke is easy, maybe you can think about the pastor wearing a stole, or you can think about Jesus coming to you in prayer, uh, in the words of scripture, um, and you can imagine Jesus just walking next to you in life and taking care of you and helping you know which way to go. Can you remember that for me? God bless you. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Help us put your yoke on us so that we can learn from you and walk beside you for all of our days. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may return to your seats. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who invites us to come to him and to find rest for our souls, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light. I have to say to you, the promise of rest sounds pretty good right now. You probably already know that we make these recordings ahead of time. And through the possibilities afforded to us by making videos, 
I toyed with the idea of filming this while resting in a hammock under the shade trees or maybe beside a pool with a drink in my hand. Both of those scenarios sound pretty relaxing to me. And right now many of us are thinking about relaxing and pondering and planning for safe ways to take a vacation or to get some much needed rest from the reality of this daily place we find ourselves, this worldwide pandemic in which um, our reality leaves us exhausted and longing for a pre-COVID-19 existence. This summer looks very different than we had envisioned. Uh, way back when we were, were planning the summer, back in November and December when it was cold, um, it's different than we thought. But all the more, we would probably, each of us, find some benefit in trying to find a way to vacation or to staycation or simply just take a break and rest and be. Jesus promises us rest, but crucially, he doesn't promise us just a way to chillax, as they say, and get away from reality, but he promises us a whole new reality that is restful and balanced and sustainable. He promises that precisely in the midst of all the busyness, chaos, and struggle of life, no matter what it throws at us, he offers a way that is easy, a way that literally means good and pleasant. It is a wonderful promise. Jesus' image which he uses to invite us into this good and pleasant life is, is an agrarian image from the first century. Life with him, Jesus says, looks like a yoke. A yoke was a common wooden instrument that was used widely in Palestine at the time. Put on two beasts of burden together, two oxen or donkey, it would keep them in step with one another as they worked together to pull a cart or a plow. An ox or a donkey, I am sure, would rather have a partner to pull the load in the heat of the day than to work alone. And Jesus invites us to come to him with our burdens, with the things that we're carrying, with our work and relationships, worry and anxiety, fear and fatigue, and to let him help carry the load. He invites us to fall in step with him, to keep pace with his gentle mercy and loving kindness, and to allow him to share in our daily tasks so that we find the good and the pleasant life that God intends for us. Rather than carrying our burdens alone, we have in him a partner and a friend. And Jesus' invitation is all the more meaningful because here in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' words come in the midst of his very own real struggle. Jesus speaks these words, come to me, which I had often thought of as an invitation, but are actually as a command, just as he was meeting his first real opposition. Welcomed by those he taught, healed, and visited with up to this point, now Jesus meets the beginning of resistance. The cities and the peoples are like children that refuse to dance to the music Jesus is playing, refuse to mourn with the wailing of John. They find fault with John's perceived asceticism because he speaks of repentance, and they find fault with Jesus' perceived gluttony because he makes no distinction about who he'll hang out with and welcomes all. But in the midst of his own troubles and the looming disaster and ultimately the cross, Jesus doubles down on the commitment to offer rest and help to all who come to him. We are still very much in the struggle of this life together in a pandemic. As of Thursday of this past week, when this video is being filmed and recorded, some states and cities of our nation that had begun to reopen are now walking it back. And we're realizing again that we are in this for the long haul. I want to tell you, I've realized in a new way this week that empathetically, we carry the hurt of the whole world, literally, all the time. I believe that. We are asking ourselves as a species, have we come to a critical juncture? 
There are questions hanging in the balance. Can we pull together as a nation? Will we be able to work together? And what are the implications if we cannot? The possible answers to these questions burden me. And perhaps they burden you. This weekend includes July the 4th, our Independence Day. And we will celebrate the United States of America. In our neighborhood, we've already heard the crack of fireworks, which I've heard are selling more and faster than ever before. And popularly, this holiday is a time to celebrate our nation's strength and power and independence. And yet Jesus' message is that we ought to acknowledge our dependence. Jesus says, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And so Jesus says, we all are dependent on Jesus who reveals and brings the love of God to us and to the world. Only this love can bring us life and rest and health. Only Jesus offers deep peace and ultimate well-being. Shalom, that real and true balance with ourselves and with one another and with all creation. From Jesus, we learn that we don't have to search the world over for vindication and acceptance and accolades. We've already received these things through the love that we get from the highest authority that exists. And yet, I think that for all of us as individuals and as people in a nation, there is a sense among us to value rugged individualism and a do-it-yourself ethic and a perceived exceptionalism. We grow up in an ideology that says, be cut loose from any yoke. Be your own person. But Jesus suggests that we are dependent, dependent on God and dependent on one another. And yet we still want to be the center of things, the center of our own life. And we call that sin. Paul addresses it in his letter today. He says, I do not understand my own actions because even when I know the good I want to do because of the sin that dwells within me, I find myself captive and I cannot do the thing I want to do. I do the thing I hate. Through and through we are captives to sin and it takes over our whole being. Another way to say it might be like this. This past week I was with my family. Sarah, my wife, and I were trying to get our older kids to listen to us. They are incredibly good at tuning us out and going on with whatever they're doing instead of washing hands or picking up or coming to the table to eat or whatever the case may be. And I was exasperated. And I said something to the kids which I shouldn't have said without thinking. But I didn't think they were listening anyway. I looked at my son and I said, Samuel, you have a problem. <laughs> and it's not a problem with your ears. It is a problem with your heart. And I meant that his desires were currently misplaced. But this little boy looked at me in shock and he burst into tears and said, something's wrong with my heart? Well, something is wrong with our hearts. And truth be told, we should all be in tears as God is when we can't or won't listen to the invitation to follow Jesus, depend on God, and care for one another. And who will rescue us from this body of death? But thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, that he invades our hearts with forgiveness and with grace and with love. He invites us into the truth that we are dependent on him, he invites us to care for one another, realizing that we're dependent on one another. And he invites us to let his yoke guide us into the rest that God prepares for us. Take my yoke upon you, Jesus says, for I'm gentle and I'm humble in heart. Learn from me. When we do that, we're able to acknowledge our sin and therefore be free of that yoke and receive a new yoke from Jesus, a new yoke to be in step with him, to go where he goes, to do as he does. In baptism, 
We are yoked to Jesus forever so that our life belongs to God. We are joined to Jesus who on the cross has pulled us with him through death and the loss of everything to the other side to resurrected eternal life with God. In baptism, we are yoked with Christ who carries us along when we're weary, who teaches us how to trust God and who prospers our work. This yoke is easy because God claims our whole life. There are no more small decisions to be made. Like Albert Einstein, who reportedly had a closet full of seven gray suits, one for every day, we don't have to spend our days parsing out and searching for who or whose we are. We know that every day, all the time, we belong to God. You know, one of the worst feelings is the last night of vacation. If it's been a good time away, and especially if you've had to travel home, you have to come home, and you're tired, and when you get home, you have to unpack, and you have a mountain of laundry, and mail to read, and grocery shopping to attend to, and email that's backlogged, and a bad case of the vacation hangovers. It's hard to let it go. But God's rest isn't a vacation away from everyday life, but God's presence with us in the details of home and work, relationship and conversation, and the decisions of every day. God doesn't take a vacation from loving us and caring for us, and the good and pleasant life Jesus brings to us isn't an ultimately unsustainable getaway that leaves just pictures and memories. It is a reality, our reality. And so may you know that you belong to Christ who is rest for our souls. And may we all experience Jesus' friendship with us happening in and through the daily tasks and relationships of our life. May we see God is with us, dancing with us when we are making music and mourning with us when we wail, offering us Rest that is all present and eternal from sea to shining sea to every continent and community and person around this world that God loves. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord of heaven and earth, you reveal your love in the intimacy of a father and only son, and promise all who are weary that they might find rest in you. Fill us with rest from our worry and fear, and make us joyful ambassadors to the world of the healing and renewal that you alone offer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For the well-being of creation, O God, for thunderstorms and sunshine days, that you might assist us to protect the air and water and land as we enjoy the yield of foods and resources. Free us from apathy in our care of creation, and direct us toward sustainable living. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear 
our prayer, O Lord. We pray for the nations of the world, and especially the United States and Canada this week, as we celebrate our shared life together. God, leaders in developing just policies and direct us all in difficult conversations. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbors. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray for all who are in need, for those who are sick, those who are tired, those feeling despair. For June, Carol, Susie, and all for whom we pray. For the World Health Organization, for scientists, hospitals, and medical workers. Let us all share your yoke and ease our burdens. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray for our congregation. Bless Pastor Philip and his family as they travel. Guide our congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, our church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine among us in our life together, that we might notice and give witness to the ways that your love transforms our lives. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We give you thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief and trouble until we join with them in a new life and take up the endless song of praise to worship you face to face. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your, your will be done, on, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Spirit. In the name of the Spirit. The three in one. The three in one. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Lift his countenance upon you. Lift his countenance upon you. God's blessing go with you. God's blessing go with you. And give you peace. And give you peace.
peace to walk the journey, worship the Christ, and witness with joy. Thanks be to God.